guys, welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your violin for the very first time. Now, if you are taking lessons, then this is something that it would be great to do with your teacher in person because that is the easiest way to set up your violin. But I'm going to be showing you just a detailed way of how to set up your violin as a beginner to really help set you up for success. So I'm going to be demonstrating this today with my quarter size violin, which belongs to my children. Um, my six year old right now actually fits this perfectly. One of the strings just snapped. <laughs> so I just want to show you because this is not the way that it should look. There should be four strings and you can see where it's missing right here. But I didn't have an extra pair of strings right now at the moment. Um, another time I'll show you guys how to put a string on when one of your strings snaps. So that's a great skill to learn also. But today, we're going to just talk about how to set up the violin for the first time. So when you get your violin, you should have a few basic things. So you should have your violin, there should be a chin rest here, and then usually you're going to have a, either a foam shoulder rest or a structured shoulder rest that comes with it. So to begin with, I'm going to show you how we put on the foam rest. With a foam rest, they usually come with a rubber band if it doesn't come with it, you can just grab a rubber band if you have one, and that's how you're going to attach it to your violin. If you have a structured rest, it just clips onto the violin with the feet, which I can show you as well. So with a foam rest, there's a thin side and a thick side, as you can see. You're going to take that thinner side and place the thin side just opposite of the chin rest, like this. So once the thin side is just opposite of the chin rest, then you kind of have it like straight along the back like this and then you're just going to hold it there and you'll grab your rubber band attach one end to the little um, knob down here at the end this is a little awkward to do this while i'm trying to show on video but you'll attach um, this one end onto the knob and then the other side comes over the back like this and then you're going to hook it over this right here okay so it's hooked right here I'm just gonna flip it over for you to see okay so it's from the knob to the edge of the violin right there so now that thin side when you lift the violin and put it onto your shoulder the thin side is what is right underneath your chin rest and the thick side kind of is shaped under your shoulder so it gives like a nice shaped and comfortable Place for your violin to rest against your shoulder on so that's how you put on the foam rest all right just real quickly in case you have a structured rest I'm going to show you on my violin how to put on the structured shoulder rest it's a little bit hard to see in here but there's one side that is shorter and one side that is taller so on my shoulder rest the shorter side is right over here and the shorter side is what you're going to place across from the chin rest again so I put the shorter side across from the chin rest and then the slightly taller side, I'm gonna put the feet on the opposite side. And once the feet are attached on the edges of the violin, you'll kind of scooch it over just a little bit until it is nice and firmly attached on the wood. Okay, so let me just double check. Everything feels good, it's nice and secure. And this is how it should look. So nice and secure. And then this, I'm gonna put it up on my shoulder. And again, it fits against my shoulder in a nice shape, um, gives some support as you're holding your violin. Okay, so that is the shoulder rest and how to put it on. Now, let's take a look at the strings, and I'm gonna show you this part with my violin. So you're going to want to learn how to tune your strings. There are four strings on the violin. There is the G string, so if you're holding it like this, it's on your right side. It's also the thickest string, so this is the G string. The next one over is the D string. The next one is the A string, and then the next one is the E string. Now, there are two ways that you can tune your strings. You can tune them with these tuning pegs up here or with the fine tuners, which are down here. My violin only has one fine tuner on the E string, but a lot of beginner violins will have fine tuners for every single string. So I'll show you on this quarter sized right here. This one has the four tuning pegs. It's easier to learn your tuning using the fine tuners at first and then later learn how to use the tuning pegs. If you do have all four fine tuners, it's a little easier that way. But they do make more of 
fine adjustments to your tuning and not large ones. So if your string completely comes loose and it's completely out of tune, or if it goes off quite a bit out of the tuning, then you should use your tuning pegs because these are gonna do more of the dramatic, large adjustments to the tuning. So I'm going to recommend below a tuner or a couple tuners that can help you learn how to tune your violin. There's an app that I like to use and then also there are tuners that you can actually just attach to the pegs of your violin and it'll tell you when your strings are properly in tune with the correct notes. So you want to make sure that each string is tuned properly into the correct tuning. That is extremely important when you're first getting started on the violin. And um, in terms of tuning with the pegs, if you want to tune higher, you're gonna have to twist your pegs in an upward direction, so this way. I'll show you like this, okay? So you, you go this way, okay? If you're wanting to tune downwards, you would tune the peg this way. If you're holding the violin like this away from you, you're, if you wanna tune up, you'd be tuning away from yourself like this. But if you wanna tune down, you have to tune towards yourself, downwards. So I can give some future videos to help you with tuning. If that's something you'd like, definitely drop a comment below and let me know. All right, so once you've tuned your violin and you've set up the shoulder rest, your violin is pretty much ready to go. Now for beginners, one other thing that you'll probably want to put on your violin are these um, stickers that help you to learn where to place your fingers in the proper place. So there's a spot for finger number one, a spot for finger number two, for finger number three and finger number four. And usually the way that you do this is the first one is going to be spaced a little bit more. So this is a whole step and then another whole step and then a half step and then a whole step. So the way that this would sound is from your E string. So from your E string, this would be E and then F sharp, G sharp, A and B. So it's whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. This is the combination for a major scale and that's one of the most common fingerings on the violin is to the major scale and so that's why this is what we start out with for beginners is this is one of the most common fingerings that you're going to use for beginner songs. So when it comes to putting these stickers on the violin, I buy these from Amazon and I'll link this below. These rolls last forever. They stick fairly well um, and Every once in a while you're gonna to have to replace them. They start to peel at the bottom a little bit. This one is actually starting to do it. So they do start to peel after a little while, but they last for a while and they're nice and clear and colorful, which is nice. It's easy for your eyes to see it against the black. So I like that. Now the other thing that I do is I buy these colorful dots also on Amazon and I'm sure you could find it at pretty much any office store. These color coding label dots is what they're called. On the violin, if you're holding it up like this on the right side, of the fingerboard. When you get up here at the connection point between the neck and the body, you're gonna put a little sticker here. So I call this the high dot and what it is for is to help students know where to slide their thumb up to. So let me demonstrate that. Um, I'm gonna show it like this so you can see the high dot and when you place your hand on the violin, you'll start with your thumb on its side next to this first sticker. And then on the other side, you're gonna attach on the side of your index finger. Now this is not a tight grip. You don't wanna be tight, but just a very loose hold. And then you'll gently slide your hand up until your thumb touches that high dot and then slide back down to that sticker. So you're gonna slide up, slide down. And this can help you to learn the, a good hand position and a nice smooth motion from a lower position into a higher position. So once you practice that slide a few times, then you come up and you stop on that dot and this gives you a holding place where you can just hold onto the wood of the violin right here. Now, as a beginner, you're not going to be using your fingers a lot yet on the fingerboard. So this high dot, you'll come up and kind of park here, hold onto the wood of the violin, and then you'll be able to practice plucking the strings for songs and things like that. Now, speaking of these dot stickers, now we're gonna go over to the bow. I'm gonna show you how to set up your bow and then how I use dot stickers on the bow to show students and help students with the different parts of the bow. When you take out your bow, it should be loosened already. And if it's loosened properly, you'll see that there's not much space between the stick of the bow and then the hairs of the bow right here. You're going to want to wind up your bow and you're going to twist the peg to the right side. Now, as I twist, you're going to see that the hairs 
start to tighten and they start to separate more and more from this, the wood of the bow. All right, so I'm twisting to the right like this and it's starting to tighten. Now when the middle of your bow, so if you're looking at your bow here, you see how there's like this slight bend in the bow right here? Right in the middle here, you want to see that it's about the width of a, fin a pinky finger right here. And that's about the tightness that you want to have on your bow. So every time you play, you're going to wind up your bow. Once you've wound up your bow, you're going to put rosin on the bow. Now, I've talked about all of these supplies in my previous video about all the things that you want to have when you're getting started on the violin. So if you need a review of that, I'll link that video down below as well. But you'll take your rosin, and I've got my rosin right here, and you're going to draw the bow back and forth on the rosin. And if this is your very first time using rosin, you're going to have to do this for a while because the very first time that you rosin a bow, it needs to get a lot of rosin powder into the hairs of the bow. And um, this helps the bow to grip into the string and to get a good sound. If the bow does not have enough rosin on it, it will not be able to dig into the string properly to get a good sound. So you'll start to see that white powder from the rosin starts to form and it comes onto the hairs of the bow and you actually can see the hairs of the bow get whiter and whiter from the powder as you put it on. So you want to have it where at least there is plenty of powder that the bow, um, sometimes I go like this, you have to rub it hard back and forth at the bottom like this, and then you can do that across the whole thing. So if you're first rosining a bow, you're gonna have to give it some nice good work <laughs> on the rosin. Get a lot of rosin on there. Okay, once you've rosined your bow properly, so now I'm gonna put those little dot stickers on my bow to separate the different sections of the bow. So the sections of the bow are like this. Right down here, near the nut of your bow, this is called the frog. So this is called the frog, kind of a funny name, but that's the name for the very bottom of your bow. Now the middle is just called the middle, so that one's very easy. And then up here, this is called the tip of the bow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put those dot stickers to separate the tip from the middle and then the middle from the frog. So we'll use two dot stickers. And you'll want to put this on the left side of the bow because that's the side that's going to be facing your eyes when you're playing and then you can easily see it. So right here to separate the tip from the middle. So I'm gonna put that right there, if you can see that. And then we're gonna put another one right here. Like right here. Press it down nice and good so that it really sticks on the wood here. Okay, so these two stickers are showing now, this is the frog, this is the middle, this is the tip. And then as you're learning, you can easily see, okay, if you're supposed to be in the tip, it's up here. If you're in the frog, down here, middle here. Pretty soon you won't need these anymore to guide you, but at first it's helpful. Oh, and don't forget when you're done to unwind your bow. That's a very important um, thing to remember also. So you're gonna turn it, when you do that, you turn it towards the left, and you unwind it until the hairs of the bow get loosened. And you can see right here that it's very loose. So the final thing that can really help as you're setting up your bow is something that's called a pinky nest. It is something that's called a pinky nest. Demonstrate it in a different video because it's a little bit detailed and I wanna show this from an overhead shot. But you'll want to have this kind of um, tape, like a painter's tape, something like that to make the pinky nest. You can order some of these online, but in my experience, I've tried a few and none of them were as good actually as the one that I was able to make from tape. So in my opinion, this is my favorite way to do it. And I will have another video that shows how to make a pinky nest, but this is the kind of tape that I use for it. And then the pinky nest is gonna sit right here next to the screw of the bow. And it's a little um, nest that you'll put your pinky in. It helps your pinky get trained to hold your bow in the proper way with a nice curved pinky instead of flopping off like this or getting very tense and straight, which these are all very common things when you're first learning how to hold the bow. So the pinky nest really helps train your hand to have the proper positioning and it really helps when you're first a beginner. So those are all of my tips for setting up your violin, setting up your bow to get started on the violin. I hope that was helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, you can go ahead and hit that like button and you can subscribe to my channel for a lot more content related to learning the violin and learning music in general. Thank you guys so much for being here. Bye-bye.